All right. Well, we're recording. My name is Ben Duffy. I am into many things, including mental health, um, Buddhism, meditation, psychedelics, applying all of these things to create the best possible experience we can in this place. And yeah, I've been getting a lot of feedback about getting my voice out there more and teaching. So here we are. Decided to make a little a little video about a topic we were discussing a lot in Costa Rica um, at, an, at the Envision Festival with a lot of um, really good friends. So that topic was um, pain and discomfort and viewing that discomfort as a purification and allowing it to be in our experience <clears throat> instead of what most people do habitually in our culture, which is to numb, dissociate, push away these uncomfortable experiences. And this is largely unconscious. This is just a habitual response to discomfort, run, push away. How do I get rid of this? And which has a place. But then at the same time, there's something to be learned from discomfort. If we can allow it to sink into our system without running, distracting, actually feeling it, being curious, what does this actually feel like? What is this fear? What is this pain from the past? What does this grief and loss actually feel like? And where do I feel it? Is it like a stabbing in my chest? Is it like a pressure in my stomach? Is it a lump in my throat? A little feeling it, allowing this energy to move if possible. <clears throat> and again, allowing it to deliver the message that you could say it's uh, meant to deliver. So yeah, um, obviously, in festival experiences, if people are in very high stimuli uh, sort of con context with a lot of you know people and a lot of people around substances that heighten these states and um, loud music, all of that, um, there can be a lot of discomfort that comes up in that. And then how do we work with this? Um, and inevitably, in an individual's life, you'll realize probably, or just looking at your, your life so far, there's been experiences that are uncomfortable. And these experiences will linger in the back of your mind and in the back of your experience. Um, this pain will linger in the back of your experience until it's really felt and moved, um, not pushed away, given the space that it deserves. So <clears throat> The first thing I want to talk about is what is pain? When I say pain, it's like kind of a general statement. So just like discomfort, um, you can look at it in sort of a binary sense. In um, Buddhism, they talk about Vedana, <clears throat> feeling tone. Every, every phenomenon sensation is either pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral. And so you can kind of view all of experience as one of those three, um, in one of those three categories. And so pain would be in the unpleasant side of Vedana. And uh, basically, what is our relationship to that? <clears throat> Are we, again, numbing alcohol, marijuana, in excess, in an unskillful way? Um, TV, is it like porn or video games? Is it socializing? Is it calling your friends? Whenever there's something uncomfortable, oh, I need to talk to somebody. <clears throat> Nothing wrong with any of these things in the right context and in the right dose. The difference between a medicine and poison is a dose. And um, yeah, learning, learning that through experience. And then when can I sit with this, with myself, with me and these sensations? If that's possible, that is the quickest route towards moving these things. And friends and community and therapists can all hold space, which can allow this process to kind of further itself organically and can allow kind of a synergistic effect on working with pain. This is why community in a lot of, you know, indigenous communities, indigenous cultures is a medicine because the collective can hold space that sometimes the indiv individual cannot. <clears throat> so yeah. Um, yeah. Making space for the discomfort that we experience in our lives, um, knowing that that's actually the only way the way out is through. There is no way around, no matter how much we distract, numb, buy fancy things, get nice vacations. 
until we feel what has to be felt, it will inhibit our lives. It'll affect our lives. And like the saying goes, that which we resist persists in our lives. That which we cannot come to terms with will keep manifesting in our experience until we can actually come to terms with said thing. Whether it's for me, and I think for most people, I mean, at points in my life, it was like insecurity in a relationship. Am I enough? Or is my partner going to leave me? Uh, do they like them more than me? <clears throat> and if I haven't come to terms with that, just as an example, creation will keep manifesting experiences that show you that you haven't until you do. And I view this as grace from something bigger than yourself, showing you let go, let go, let go in this process of growth in this process of loosening, of becoming less dense through lifetimes as consciousness evolves. <clears throat> Creation will show you what you still haven't let go of. And so, yeah, something like, um, something like resistance also constructs our experience of suffering. So Buddhist teacher Shin Zen Young has a beautiful equation, actually, for what suffering is. And it is suffering equals pain multiplied by resistance. So pain is a part of life. Pain is inevitable. Our resistance is our choice and we have agency in that. And with that equation, and this is what Shinzen says as well, if resistance becomes very small, the pain is the same, but if pain is a level 10 and it's multiplied by two, it's 20 units of suffering. If pain is 10 and it's multiplied by a hundred, being like, I need to get out of here. This isn't okay. Oh my God, the world's ending. <laughs> then than what we have like a thousand units of suffering and we have that power within ourselves and we always have we just haven't known most people haven't known so all of this stuff might seem a little complex or out there but apply to your experience to see hey maybe maybe uh maybe this works maybe this doesn't for me and that's all totally fine it's just these are all just uh little things i'm handing out things that i've found in my life to be really transformative in a lot of ways so and again certain things hit at certain times and maybe they don't hit for you right now and that's totally fine but these are valuable seeds to plant just somewhere in the psyche and sometime in the future maybe um it'll come up and be like oh maybe that's what he meant <clears throat> but yeah if it's not useful for you obviously ditch it um <clears throat> so yeah through the practice of sitting with discomfort we're able to build a capability and a strength in the skill of holding pain and discomfort. My experience, high intensity states such as high dose psychedelics, as well as meditation, long meditation or retreat experiences, um, build that capacity where when I feel shame or guilt or fear, fear for the future, where the world's going, where my life is going. I don't know. What does that fear feel like? Just think about it. I feel, like, I feel it in my belly right now, a contraction. But I don't have to run from it. I don't have to get up and change it. And even now, as I'm feeling it, I feel it move. <clears throat> and it's through the ability to sit with this fear that we can move it through our systems and it manifests physically, but also manifests in the mind. The fear of the future, this potential apocalypse we're all facing in today's world, it's intense. And again, what we resist persists. So until we can come to terms with whatever our apocalypse story is, how it'll go, violent deaths for yourself, people you love, <clears throat> and it's not fun, but it's out there and it's a possibility. What's our relationship to that? Can we come to terms with that? If that's the way that creation wants to flow, who am I to say otherwise? Who am I to get in the way? Who am I to try to stop it? I'm feeling it, the pain of that. I'm letting the tears come if they come, which they will. 
and letting it to move, let it move through you because there is no other way. And until we can come to terms with these mental, physical scenarios of fear and pain, they will manifest in our experience. It is that fear that will bring it into fruition if we can come to a place of acceptance and love, and that is not complacency. We still do everything that we can to affect these circumstances. But at the end of the day, accepting what our fate is. <clears throat> and only through that can we make this world a more beautiful place by feeling, feeling this, not looking away. So the world is in pain. I'm in pain. We're in pain. Feel it. It's the only way. Otherwise, more is on the way until this lesson is learned, until we let go collectively of our lives, of everything, the universe. Creation itself will show you these lessons. Let go, let go, let go. <clears throat> Feel. Let go into feeling, into the feeling body, into the intelligence of the soma. <clears throat> mm. Yeah, so that's um, just a brief video on pain and purification. And uh, yeah, try it out for yourself. Also, so the level of purification, if that's what you're going for, depends also on the level of presence and mindfulness that is directed towards the experience. If I am even unconsciously distracting, the level of purification is much lower. <clears throat> Versus if I'm really with it, feeling this, maybe in meditation, maybe in silence, maybe with my breath, <clears throat> if I'm really feeling it, we're building a capability and a capacity to sit with intensity. And then we don't have to run. We don't have to resist as much and amplify the suffering of our experience. When I feel difficult sensations and difficult stories and I don't have to resist them, I don't have to escape them, the resistance lowers naturally and all of a sudden, these things are very workable. This feeling is like when I hold it long enough, when I'm as familiar with the contractions of my body, the, the tightness, the, the mental feelings, the, the wanting to run and hide. If I can become familiar and friendly with these things, lowering the resistance, they're all very workable. Even really big time stories about one's own death or lack lack of success, lack of love, all of these things. If you tap into it, this, these feelings, when you really feel them, it's like, oh, that, that isn't actually that bad. I, I think I can sit with this. And again, this is a practice that takes, you know, years. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. But like anything else, like any sport you've ever done or any art or skill, it just gets, you improve over time. It's like a muscle. When you are working out consistently, your muscles get bigger and your muscles don't shrink when you're not using them. This affects all aspects of your life in very real time situations. Um, so yeah, again, a very useful skill, a very useful practice, just beneficial to bring to your awareness as far as, am I running from something right now? And what could that be? Slowing down, becoming curious. And do I have to run from this? I sit with this, breathe with this, cry, let the energy move up and out. <clears throat> so yeah, again, my name is Ben Duffy. I'm going to try to start making more videos about all sorts of topics. Um, again, like Buddhism, psychedelics, um, global issues, all that. Um, yeah. If you want to get in touch with me, the best way would be right now, Instagram, it's Duff Daddy 100. Um, yeah. Hit me up on that. If you want to connect, um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Um, yeah, bye.